Hello and welcome to my series, Ask an Angel, where we discuss topics related to the world of startups, entrepreneurs, and investing. I'm your host, Jonathan Hung, and on today's episode, I'm joined by Yanni Huffnagel. Let me give a little background about Yanni. He's the founder and CEO of Lemon Perfect, a zero sugar cold pressed lemon water, named best new product of Bev19, of BevNet's best of 2019 awards. Lemon Perfect is widely considered by industry insiders to be one of the most innovative emerging beverages in the marketplace. Yanni has also served as an assistant men's ba- college basketball coach for Nevada, California, Vanderbilt, Harvard, and Oklahoma. He earned a reputation as one of the most dogged recruiters in America. And in his 10 years of college coaching, he's, he, his team's reached the NCAA tournament six times. Thank Yanni, thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, so let's get it. Let's pop off right away. Um, so, you know, when did you start Lemon Perfect? John, it's been, uh, it's been a little over four years now. So my last year in coaching, I was at the University of Nevada, Reno. And um, uh, the short story is I was on a recruiting trip to Santa Rosa Junior College. And uh, on the way, I stopped mm. in a sports supplement store to grab a couple of protein bars. And the man working behind the register, who's now become a great friend, uh, saw my Nevada basketball polo and he said, do you work for the team? And I said, yes, I'm the assistant coach. He said, my God, my dream is to be a strength and conditioning coach for an NBA basketball team. So we exchanged numbers and about a month later, he sent me, uh, he sent me a draft of a book that he was writing on the ketogenic diet. And in the back of his book were all these sample meal plans and every day started by drinking organic lemon water, uh, which I, I hate it. Uh, and uh, I said, there has to be a better way. And that, that, was, that was four years ago, a little over four years ago now. Wow. I mean, I mean, what would you say, you know, is different about your product than other products out in the market? Well, Jonathan, I, I think, you know, we've, we play in a category that, that really hasn't seen compelling innovation since Buy and you know Ben Weiss launched Buy um, in the early 2010s. So we're talking about over 10 years now. And um, you know, versus our competitive category, there's nothing with with our flavor with zero sugar. Uh, the refreshing profile that Lemon Perfect has, bottled in 100% recycled plastic and organic. Um, and we're doing all of that at a price point. Uh, where we are very, very competitive to the category. Yeah, wonderful. I mean, I want to say, like, I see Lemon Perfect everywhere. You know, it's getting so much traction. Why do you think that's been the case? Obviously, because of yourself, Yanni, but I'm sure you're going to give credit to your team. People, Jonathan. <laughs> I mean, we, we talk about it all the time. I mean, you know, our product mm-hmm. is not what's in the bottle. Our product is our people. Our people that scale this business. Um, we're really good at retail execution. And for me, you know, beverage has to be one, especially early on in the trenches, in the street. And so, you know, we have a great retail team that has done a, a wonderful job driving the activity and then our team goes and executes against it. But, but, but we've been very, very good executing at retail, winning where we are, um, and that's allowed us to really scale the brands, um, you know, I would say violently over the last couple of years since we, since we launched um, in the back half of, of 2018. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so how I'd love to hear your principle, you know, as a former college coach, like building a team, like how did you build your team? You know, the, the, like what, what did you need or what were you looking for? What you're constantly adding to? You know, I think I think we we number one and John and I talk about this with our group all the time. We look for uncommon grit. We, we like mm-hmm. to use that word. I mean, it's you know, we, we have a, um, a, a pursuit of winning and, and, and what we are. And, one of those, you know, one one of those bullet points is uh, we must be an organization of uncommon grit. It's not an easy job. I tell our people all the time: this will be this will be the most incredible challenge of their career, building Lemon Perfect into a billion dollar brand. It'll also be when we look back through the lens of time. It'll also be the most rewarding. And so we look for, but to get there, right? You have to have an uncommon grit about you. Um, 
I look for uh, teammates that I know believe in what we're building, right? I, I look for, for people mm -hmm. that that will bleed yellow, right? Uh, because because you have to have that. And so and so ultimately within five minutes of talking to someone, Jonathan, I know what how enthusiastic they are for the product. Right? And that's where it starts. You gotta believe in what you're building. You gotta believe that you can actually go disrupt in an American beverage ecosystem that's that's dominated by high calorie and high sugar options. You know, and, and so like that and, and and you know our mission is is to promote healthy hydration and deliver the joy of flavor to anyone, anytime, anywhere. And we say our people have to do that from the heart. Like that's got to come from the heart, right? And so you got to have a grit about you. You got to believe in what you're doing, and then you got to be inspired by our mission. So like that's what I look for when I when I think about our our team. But this is not Monday through Friday nine to five, Jonathan. Right? The bells are ringing all day long. Um, yep. And uh, and that's right. And it's a game that is almost impossible to win. But remember, hard is not impossible. There's a difference between hard and impossible. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking for people that will climb that mountain with us, that arduous mountain with us, but understand that there is, there is a way. There is a way to cut through the chaos and be the last man standing. Yeah, amazing. And, and speaking of that, like, what do you think you're doing better than your competitors? Or what are they missing? How are you differentiating yourself? It's a good question, Jonathan. Um, so I think it's a two part answer because I think, mm -hmm. I think we are different from other emerging beverage brands in that, um, we've been able to, to, um, to put really good capital partners around our table that allows us uh, to compress our margin story today to build a big story for tomorrow, mm -hmm. right? Um, and especially in the face of, of macro supply chain headwinds, you've seen a lot of, of emerging food and beverage brands that, that are, are uh, very margin sensitive that um, feel like they need to, you know, have free cash flow below the line today. We don't think like that. Number one for us is driving share of summer. I want as many people drinking Lemon Perfect as possible right now because when you drink our product, you come back, you come back in a big way. And so compressing our margin story is a, is a sword that I fall falling straight on because as the business scales, right, um, our future looking cops math is really compelling. So w we have a plan or a path to profitability. Um, but again, we couldn't do that without the great capital partners that we have. So again, that's the first answer. The second answer is that versus our competitive category, versus the brands that have been in the space for, you know, vitamin water launched in the early 2000s, 20 years, by early 2010s, you know, approaching 15 years, hey, 15 years, by a go 15 years. You have, you have legacy brands that frankly are not as, uh, they're, they, they don't have the characteristics across the board that we have, right? Um, they're not as flavorful. They don't have zero sugar. They're not squeezed from real fruit. They're not bottled 100% recycled plastic. So we've, you know, we've innovated in a really stale category, okay? Um, and so again, like I look at your question in two buckets. One is how are we competing versus emerging food and beverage? How are we different there? And I think I, hopefully I answered that. And then the second is, well, how are we different from our competitive category? And that's where our product just wins. That's where our product is just better. Mm -hmm. It's a fact. If you ask any consumer that goes into a, you know, grocery, like our products will win in a taste test nine out of 10 times. And then it's gonna win on a nutritional depth mm -hmm. test 10 out of 10 times. So we are truly better for you and better tasting than the competitive category around us at a price point that's in line with the category. 
No, that's great. Yeah. And so let's switch gears a little and talk about, you know, I mean, this is a show about talking about how you get started, right? And really when you're when you're a startup, it's all about funding. So you know, I'd love for people to learn how you found your investors. And people always want to hear that side of the story, you know, right? <laughs> Jonathan, with a single step is what I'll tell you. And, you know, the, 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 the truth is, is all it takes is, is one or two people, especially early on, to really believe in you. Mm-hmm. And it's not, listen, like we had, we had, I, at the beginning, John, I was running around with a gallon jug. Uh, I was pouring a gallon into little four ounce, four ounce plastic jugs that I was buying on Amazon. You know, our, our product was, it was, you had to keep it cold at the beginning. So literally I'd be, you know, I'd be going to a meeting. I'd be, you know, jamming the jug into a bucket of, or into a ice bag and then come back, go to the next meeting. Like that's literally what I, but, but I think I was, I was aided by the fact that we had a physical product that someone could either, that, it, that you could taste, right? So that helps. Um, and, mm-hmm. and, and what I would tell you is from the very beginning, we had a story of the Big Ten. We had a story of we can build a product that knows no boundaries older, young, rich or poor, black or white, male or female, gay or straight, I don't care where you shop, what you look like, how much money you make, okay? Like, we have a product that can be for you. And so I was always able to articulate a vision of Big Tam and Big Upside. Um, And I think when people are making bets, especially early on, they want to at least dream in a big way. And I was able to present that from day one. Um, Now, I had no idea what I was doing, but what I would tell you is we had a couple of early believers and what happened was um, my first meeting, and and this is is the truth, I I, I met with with a potential investor on the Upper West Side um, Mm -hmm. uh, at the Smith on the Upper West Side, and I I ran in there and I sat down and, and I said, uh, I said, uh, you know, Danny, here we go. Here, 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 you know, this is, this is the product. And we both went to Cornell. So that helped. So there was a, there was a warm introduction. And Danny said, my God, I love this. And I love you, but I have to go check with my wife. Okay. And, and, uh, he said, can you bring me some more product? So I was, I moved in with my mom and dad on the Upper East Side. So literally I took a bus. Okay, as soon as I got off the dumb again, I ran to the bus stop, I got on a crosstown bus, I ran back up to 84th and 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 and, and first and got up and, and poured some more out of the jug. I got back on the bus, I went back to his apartment, and then that night he called me and said, My God, my wife loves this. I'm in, I'm in for fifty thousand dollars and I wanted to meet my friend Joe. And then I met with Joe a couple days later uh, at uh, at Grand Central Station. And Joe said, I'll in for 50. And then I want you to go meet my friend. And, then, and the next thing you know, we had 40 yeses. Uh, uh, a check from, mm-hmm. the smallest check was 5,000. The biggest check was 100,000. We had $400,000 checks. And mm-hmm. that allowed us to make, you know, a million dollars worth of mistakes. Um, but get the product to market. And uh, uh, yep. what we did really well early on Jonathan was build a data story in a very concentrated area. So we always felt like Southern California was ground zero for, for, you know, emerging food and beverage brands. And, and our first 22 stores were Erewhon, Bristol Farms, and Lazy Acres. We had 22 stores. Okay. Mm. And all we did was demo to this, this, you know, this was before the madness of, of 2020 and all we did was was demo 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 we promoted aggressively and the next thing you knew like in Erewhon we, we were doing head scratching velocity and then I ran back to our investors I said okay guys look at this data uh, and 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 uh, we then raised another you know 3.7 million and and you know, then, then then we were able to go to New York and we did well in New York, Whole Foods in, in the Northeast. And, you know, you just keep building a story. Um, 
And what I'll tell you is the, the early investors, um, they just bet on, on the jockey and, and the dream of a product, big upside, good tasting product. Remember, there was there was no multiple skew portfolio jockey. There was just what what just led me this today was that was let me put. Um, but yep. over the last couple of rounds, um, the fundamentals of the business have become very, very compelling. Um, you, I would argue that there might not be an emerging fruit or beverage brand with the upside, the valuation upside, or the liquidity upside, I should say, that, that we have. Uh, and we're, we're still a massive underdog, John, but don't get me wrong, massive underdog. Right, but right. the margin profile of the business, as we look at new potential co-packers, introducing different vessel sizes that are very margin accretive to the business, new formats, uh, you know, a club package that that uh, could be a profitable package for it. Like there's just, there's a lot of excitement around the actual business metrics now. Um, and we've grown into that. Mm -hmm. But at the beginning, to sit there with a piece of paper and say, okay, our margin structure, like, God darn, like, it just doesn't think about it. It doesn't make any sense. Who cares? You're not selling the business in year one. You're not selling the business in year two. That's right. So, so it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you have a path mm -hmm. to get there. And, and look, it helps me that I'm a single founder. So my dilution math is different than if you have to divide it by two or divide it by two or divide it by three or divide it by four. Right? Mm -hmm. um, well, now it hurt me at the beginning because right. it was just me in a little room and I cried myself to sleep most nights. But once you, once you hire your first couple people, then they become like co-founders, right? So, 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 look, um, so that's, listen, I know that's a long answer, but, you know, it's an answer that's, that's, no, as right. you can, I think, hear uh, from deep inside my heart because I've lived, you know, I've lived through joy and agony around, around the capital raising, but for the most part, it's been a pretty good ride so far. Yeah. And you know what's great? Yanni, I'm going to give you credit for this too. It's like, you know, I'm an investor too and I see all these other, you know, beverage companies and they all say, oh, I know Yanni. You know, I go talk to Yanni. Yanni's my friend, you know, and that's what's so great about you that you offer that advice to everybody because you've been through it. You well, lived through it and you're I a survivor and you're a winner. I appreciate winner you saying too. that, John. And what I'll tell you is, you know, um, to a fault, I respond to everything, every email, every Instagram DM, every LinkedIn message, you never know. Uh, I love building bridges, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, but look, I, I just take great pride in, 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 you know, being available and, and living life with great energy. Look, you only get to go through this thing one time, right? Uh, we, we live yeah. the journey yeah. of life one time. Um, Lemon Perfect, um, you know, honestly um, allows me to meet so many amazing, interesting, talented, smart, hungry people, and um, and it's it's been really fun. So um, you know, the product is you know helps, I guess, um, but just try to live with positive energy, man, and 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 see where the chips fall. Yeah, no, wonderful. And Yanni, I love to get your 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 own experience with this. Like, you know, as a consumer product company, you know, it's different obviously than a tech company. But what has been your experience like? You know, that decision of whether to put do more direct consumer or, or do traditional retail. You know, what has that yeah, journey been like for you? Yeah, it's a great question. Last four years. Look, you know, um, I've never seen a Coke truck or a Pepsi truck uh, back up to. Uh, to, uh, to Amazon or to our direct consumer fulfillment uh, warehouses, uh, three warehouses or fulfillment centers that we have through PL. Um, we look at we look at our e-commerce uh, verticals uh, as a marketing channel. Okay, um, we are a retail first brand. Uh, we think, and we're not waiting here yet 
but over time we would like to have somewhere between 85 and 90 percent of our business um through wholesale so into retail or alternative channels of trade um and and have e-commerce amazon and direct consumer be about you know 10 to 15 percent of our business um uh but remember product searches today they start on google they start on amazon um our own direct consumer platform allows us uh to be creative around certain marketing activity um driving people to our our website um so we think it's an important piece of the business um uh, but we look at it as a as a marketing channel so like all of our spend um on on amazon and direct consumer we actually it's a marketing expense not a sales expense um and, and just because that's how we that's how we look at the platform minus i apologize minus some selling fees on amazon but but the marketing dollars that we use to either in platform drive people on amazon or you know through any of the you know facebook advertising whatever that's all you know marketing expense but for us a healthy business is a, is a really good retail business remember so much of beverage is immediate consumption cold and multi packs you know in your you know your club stores your grocery stores so but beverage is an impulse game uh and e-commerce doesn't offer at least not yet you have instant commerce platforms like go pop or seven now but but for the most part beverage is still a a c store cold game mm -hmm. no great and to switch gears a little bit again, like, you know, giving advice, like what would you tell a young founder trying to bring their original life in the CPG game? Number one, I would tell them, make sure your product tastes good. Um, that would be number one for me. Uh, you know, I, I have, listen, if I'm gonna, me, my psychology is if I'm gonna build something, it's going to at least have a chance to be really big and really magical. So you can't do that unless your product tastes great. Good luck winning in Walmart or Target or Publix or Wawa or mm -hmm. Quick Trip if your product doesn't taste good. Yep. Okay. Um, so that's number one. Uh, and then I would tell you surround yourself with really good people early on whether they're full-time or in a consulting role. I was very fortunate. I, I surrounded myself mm -hmm. early on with, with a couple of, of advisors that understood the space. Um, Dan Morad and Rob Alshiller from Critical Mass Group. And you know, they, they really helped me mm -hmm. early on. I mean, we built the brand in Southern California and Dan and Rob are still involved with what we're we're building today in a, in a, in a material way. Um, so, you know, yep. for me, again, taste wins and then surround yourself with people that really know what they're doing and, and have an inflammable enthusiasm for the product. Like if you don't really believe mm -hmm. in what you're building, turn around and go home, turn around and go home. Yep. Like don't do this because you think, you're going to make a hundred million dollars. You know, that, if you believe in what you're doing and you surround yourself with great people, you can do that. Like that, you can, you can, well, if you're in a category with Big Ten, like you, so, so that would be the next thing. I would tell you, don't create in a niche category. Cause I think in food and beverage, it's really challenging to break through the noise if you don't have a big group of people mm -hmm. that, that, that you can sell your product to. Right. Um, so, mm -hmm. and I think they make it simple. Like I really do. If you look at some of the, 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 the big winners like that we've had over time, I mean, like they've all relatively been simple, simple, like RX bar kind, uh, uh, um, you know, vitamin water, but like these are, these are just, you know, they're not, you know, hard to understand ideas or concepts, liquid IV, like they're just, you know, I mean, there's a hundred others, but, 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 you know, 
So that, that's what I would say, John. But at the end of the day, man, like you have to believe mm-hmm. in your product. And you gotta be willing Absolutely. to go to the, I mean, mm-hmm. like I tell people all the time, there are two ways out of this office for me. One is with some coins in my pocket, two is in a box, that's it. Like Jonathan, that's it. <laughs> so like yep. you gotta yep. be willing to, yep. to damn near die for what you're building. And if you don't genuinely believe in, in the product, like you got no shot. So, so yep. and it's not yep. for every man or woman. It goes back to what I was saying at the top. You gotta have an uncommon, you gotta have an uncommon. I mean, you gotta be a little bit off too, John. Like that's the other thing. Like you, you know, you you, yep. you, you gotta be, you almost have to be delusional. So, um, you know, that, that, that's, I know I gave you a lot there, but you know, that, that's what I would, that's what I would, that's no, what I would tell you. And then, and then be focused, be focused. Like we, mm-hmm. you know, we got seven flavors, one product, you know, we've had opportunities to deviate. We've been very, very focused. So, you know, like that, that, that's what I would say is just focus, focus the beginning on, you know, a core group of stores or geography, you know, um, if you're going to be, you know, a direct consumer product, um, you know, figure out where a really good place to play is and, and, and just go for it. Yeah. And this, I, I tell people all the time, there's things you, you, you can't learn, like, you know, reading a textbook or going to business school or anything you got experience in life. So I love to, you, to tell people like, you know, what was your biggest learning experience to date running Lemon Perfect? Like, is there anything you would have done differently or all in hindsight? Like, hey, going forward, like this is good advice to have done, I wish I had. You know, um, Jonathan, when, when we raised our, I go back to thinking about like our first round of capital and a friend of mine who was in venture, I said, Vasu, I said, how are we going to go raise the money? He said, well, I think you should do it mm. as a convertible note. I said, a convertible what? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and uh, we had another investor uh, or as he was considering his investment, he said, how are you going to create a multiple skew portfolio? different flavors. I said, a, a multiple what? I'm sorry, what's a skew? You know, Jonathan, you just, I don't think there's a, I look, I, I read a few books early on, uh, and I gotta be honest, and, and I gotta get better here. Since we sold our first bottle, Jonathan, I haven't read one book. I don't know if I've watched, I don't know if I've watched one movie. Okay, uh, I love Twitter. I actually think that Twitter is an unbelievable tool. The algorithm is really, really good. So, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I, 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 I get a lot from Twitter, um, but darn John, like you learn by doing. You learn by being in the arena yeah. and playing the game. Like that's it. I mean, you, there is no other. I mean, th- there's no other way. You mm-hmm. learn by making mistakes. Yeah. Hopefully not twice. Okay. Um, and you learn by tears. You do. Mm-hmm. You learn by tears. Yeah. yeah. And it's the darkness that you have to walk through in the first couple of years. Um, I'm telling you, entrepreneurship sounds good until you start. And then it is a mm-hmm. early on. And now for the first time, last couple of months, I'm starting to really see the light. But John, that's four years. No. And um, yeah, there were nights where I would cry myself to sleep. I would call my mom try to figure out how I can go back and coach basketball. Um, we mm-hmm. raised our uh, third round. Uh, it was a little bridge financing. And um, we the first check came in, we had we had negative $8,000 in the bank. So, um, mm-hmm. and it was in, the, in, the, in a, a really troubling 
a macro stretch. Like, like the S and P was down like five percent the previous month or something, right? And it was just, and so, so you just, it, you just, it's, it's unmanageable until you go through it. But you just learn by being in the arena, right? The man or woman in the arena, um, and you're gonna get bloodied and bruised. But you just gotta keep getting up. You just gotta keep getting up off the mat and 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 fight and have people believe in you whether it's investors whether it's your own team whether it's customers distributors vendors um build belief build belief um and when you have like we talk about this this concept of make them be proud to wear our jersey make 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 those stakeholders that touch Lemon Perfect proud to wake up in the morning and wear the jersey, wear the yellow jersey. And mm-hmm. if you can do that and get that level of buy-in, you've got action. You've got action. You're in the game. You're in the game, and you can win the game. Yep. Yep. No. No, thank you, Ani. And I think the most impressive thing about you and I, when we first met in person, where you were talking about your principles, you know, and it was like, wow. I mean, like, you know, I don't know if that was coming from your coaching background, but it was just like, you may, I, mean, you may, I remember I wrote them down, you know, and I'd love for you people to share, share. It was like, it was eight, right? Like key principles that you have. And, you know, it, I, I know that even in this conversation, it, it guides your life. And I think that's so important. For what that's, that's that's you absolutely want. right, John. And I can, I can, I can read those principles here if if you want. Uh, it might be interesting. Might be interesting. Yeah. I, we we actually just we made we made a few we made a few edits. So I will um, I will share them here. Um, and uh, here we go. Okay. We call this we call this the pursuit of winning. We call this the pursuit of winning. I touched on it earlier. Number one, mm-hmm. championship level coaching will determine our outcome. So we all, the entire organization, need to be great coaches. So I need to be a great coach for all of our people. Our regional sales managers need to be great coaches for their people. Our ASM need to be great coaches with our distributor mm-hmm. partners. Okay, they need to be great coaches with with uh, general managers or grocery managers at the store level. Number one, championship level coaching will determine our outcome. Number two, we must build a team first culture anchored by constant communication and elite energy. We must build a team first culture anchored by what we call CCEE. It's an acronym that we use in the company. Constant communication and elite energy. We gotta be, we gotta be talking to each other. We gotta make sure we communicate, right? It's like when you're playing defense, coaching basketball. You gotta be early, loud, and continuous with your talk, right? Like if you're guarding a pick and roll, you know, and you're, and you're the five man, and your point guard's about to get screened, you gotta be like, Early, like screen left, screen left, screen left, right? So you, and you got you to gotta say that over and over again, right? And then X1, your point guard playing defense, got to get into the ball, force them into the screen, right? So like, is it, but you got to be great communicators. And then, and then, you know, listen, elite energy, like that's, 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 like, that's just, that's table stakes, right? But you got to bring that to the table every day, right? Like we say that, like, man, like, like, like you can control that. You can control your energy, okay? Uh, Number three, and this is what I said before, we must be an organization of people with uncommon grit. Number four, Mm -hmm. field enthusiasm and execution will drive our growth. Number five, we must have an intense focus on the scoreboard. We must have an intense focus on the scoreboard, right? Jonathan. At the end of the day, there's one number that matters. Okay? There's one number that matters. Ready. Or at least that's how I have to have our people think. So our, our organization is focused on top line revenue. 
myself, our finance team, our executive team, that will focus on the bottom line of the business, right? The resource allocation. I hear our people driving the business, thinking about share of stomach um, and bottles and hands. Number six, the pursuit of our mission to promote healthy hydration and deliver the joy of flavor anytime, anywhere, and for everyone must come from the heart. Got to come from the heart. That's what I talked about earlier. Got to believe in what we're doing, what we're building. Yep. Got to believe. Okay? Yep. And then number seven is we must think big. I want our people building massive displays. I want them thinking like we could be building the biggest one ever. Mm -hmm. We got to think big. Okay? We got to think big, dream big. And, uh, and so those are my, those mm -hmm. are our... Those are our seven bullet points under the pursuit of mission, uh, the pursuit of winning. Okay, and that's what it's about, Jonathan. Like, yeah. listen, man, it's a make miss game. Yep. Like, at the end of the day, we're gonna yep. walk off the yep. floor for the last time. Winners or losers, there really is no middle ground. I don't know what that's a middle ground even looks like. You either win <laughs> or you go home. Absolutely. And we 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 talk about. This concept there's survive and advance, survive and advance. And every year is another game. Mm -hmm. Every year is another game. We're now in the third round of the NCAA tournament, call it, or our tournament. But we got more games to play. And we, in, in a, we think about profitability as cutting down the nets. Okay? So, like that. But, but, but you know, and then we break down years into, into, into quarters, so like, you know, we just delivered on the top line and the bottom line in the first quarter, and so we get to celebrate that for a little bit and go right back to work. But you gotta survive and advance. Survive and advance. All we wanna do is play another day. And that's not easy, Jonathan, yep. you know what I mean? But but like, all we wanna do yep. is know. play another day. Eventually, eventually, we wanna be the last team standing and cut down the nets. Okay. That's amazing, Ani. Thank you so much for sharing that. Of course. That's been great. Thank you. Listen, I think I took too much of your time. I want to really thank Yanni for joining us. And listen, Yanni, where can someone reach you at? Or more importantly, where can they get this? Where can they get Lemon Perfect? Jonathan, we're at retailers nationwide. We are available on Amazon and also at LemonPerfect.com. Um, so uh, wide distribution. And um, I am available the easiest way to contact me would be LinkedIn. So message me on LinkedIn um, or my DMs are open on Instagram and Twitter. So um, uh, on Instagram, I'm at Yanni, Y-A-N-N-I, it's very easy. Um, and then on uh, on Twitter, backslash Y Huffnagel, first initial, last name, H-U-F as in Frank, and as in Nancy, A-G-E-L. So, uh, and I will, uh, I will get back to anyone that that uh, that sends me an email. Oh, that's that's so great of you. Hey, thank you again, Yanni, and we'll see everyone in the next episode.